Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow 3 with another analysis stream. And today we're going to have a match between Rymark and Hokomoko on Badlands. Now, apparently, Rymark hasn't actually had a chance to play in a while before this game happened. So we might be a little bit rusty. They will probably play fine, though. They're still really good players. And Hokomoko, we've seen a few games recently. And Hokomoko has been doing remarkably well, actually. Hokomoko has shown themselves to be learning this game very rapidly. I'm eager to see what they come up with in this game. So first off, as usual, we're going to go over the map itself. And I have started the replay a bit just to get it going. So the factories are up. So despite my discussion of the factories, the players have already chosen their factories. Anyway, so this map, rather hilly map, as pretty clear. Very focused on these ridges and it is also symmetric, is is typical, though not all maps are symmetric, but yes, it is. As you can see, there's a ridge outside of the main base, along with a nice little paths that go around the bottom. But these are totally bot pathable. However, because of the fact that vehicles would have to go through these paths around the side, you don't ever really see vehicles. Normally you see usually cloakies and shields. This is actually a fairly strong shield bot map. Though obviously jump bots and amphibs can be used. We saw amphibs used by drone in, I believe, the July tournament to pretty good effect, actually. And then expansions over to the southeast and northwest. In the southeast you have three metal, northwest you have three metal, and there's a decent amount of reclaim populating the map as well. Like just default reclaim, there's about 2,000 metal overall, and about 100 metal in each, well, actually, 350 metal or so in each base. So most of it is in the center. But there is still a decent amount of reclaim to be taken. Overall, it is a map that kind of encourages defense, encourages a bit of reclaim, it encourages quite a bit of early construction, actually bear in mind, a fair amount of expansion too, all of the metal spots are 1.5, not the standard two, they are plus 1.5 each. This is a bit of a harder map to set up economically other than the reclaim. The reclaim helps a lot, but the reclaim is also a little bit necessary. So we'll probably see the players go for early workers, try to reclaim, and then build from there to some decent raiding forces. There are multiple paths to raid from, of course, you can raid basically along the corners. You can raid through the center as well, but that's often where defenses are built. So I doubt we're going to see too much of that. However, that may be something that's done just because early on in the game, the defenses are not going to be there. Anyway, let us begin and see what the players go for. Hokomoko is going for Clokibot Factory, while Ramark going for Jump Bot Factory, and Ramark is going immediately for the Freaker, while Hokomoko is going for a very quick Conjurer. Both players going for a rapid early worker. As I mentioned before, and yes, early reclaim from Hokomoko and Ramark. Not going for the early reclaim yet. I'm not sure if this is an early expansion freaker. I believe it is. I don't know, early defense. Interesting. Ramark particularly concerned about an early rush strategy, which is not what Hokomoko, not what Hokomoko is going for. Hokomoko instead going for five, well, three glaives after this, five glaives in total pretty quickly. Overall, the Hokomoko is actually just raiding over to the side. This this is a good thing to do. I mean, it's a little bit early to do it, but in general, it's not a bad idea to check the corners, make sure your opponent hasn't sent any workers over there, just throughout the game. Because these corners are pretty defensible. Once you get set up there, it's pretty easy to just hold these ridges with defensive turrets. I'm not surprised it's being checked. I think it might be a little early for Hokomoko to do that, but if Hokomoko keeps doing that throughout the game, that is going to be very strong. Well, Rymark going for early puppies. Clearly a bit concerned about early raiding. A little surprised they aren't using these puppies to raid themselves. Not terribly surprised, though. That's not typically what they're used for. They're often used for defense. They trade evenly with glaives. And actually, because they're slightly cheaper, they're 50 mil compared to glaive 65. It's a slight bargain. Because they kill glaives one-to-one, -one, but then you can reclaim the glaive, and that's... That's profit. Yeah, Rymark, however, is pretty well defended against any early raids. The northwest side here... Sorry, the northeast side, I should say. North side of their base in general actually is pretty... Yeah, it's all pretty well defended. Everything's covered by defensive turrets. So Rymark going for more of a defensive game, while Hokomoko going for... Actually, a fairly similar start, though definitely focused on expansion. Taking that southeast quickly, which I definitely agree with. And Hokomoko... This is actually the bigger thing. Now, Hokomoko did move their glaive from the southeast, but the northwest, they still have their glaive set up, which is a good idea. If Rymark goes over to the northwest, Hokomoko will know. And that's exactly what they needed to have done in the first place, and that's exactly what they have done. They haven't set up as much in the southeast, so this is a bit of a gamble. This conjurer here could be walking into a trap. It isn't. 
Pokemoko is correctly surmising that Rymark has not decided to go for the south. He's not sending a Puppy or two down there to see if any workers come in and try to kill them off in the first place. I should point out that puppies do... Do not one-shot workers. But still, it's an important thing to point out. That that was a thing to worry about. Now, Hokomoko right now, 11 and 20, while Rymark is at 12 and 12. Hokomoko will be able to make full use of this reclaim they're... Well, they were planning on taking. They aren't going for that anymore. So Rymark... Kind of interesting. I'm not sure why they are going... F Actually, I am kind of sure why they're going for these early defenses. Like I said, this map rewards defensiveness. To an extent. However, defenses, especially heavy defenses, can be penetrated by you know, a fair amount of warriors, or Rocco's can, or hammers. Actually, we rarely see hammers, but the Kalukabot Factory does have that option. They do have the hammer. That is an artillery, or Zeus. Zeus could work as well, though I believe hammers are cheaper. Yeah, hammers are cheaper by a wide margin. You just don't see them very often, though. They are difficult to use well, but if you know your opponent is going for heavy defenses, they could be handy. Anyway, Rymark switching over to Pyros. And now sending a puppy over to the northwest. Also has a puppy over to the southeast, so at least they are somewhat aware of what's going on. Not totally, though. I'm actually a little curious. What, oops. what does Rymark know? So Rymark right now does not actually know about this. Has not seen the nano frame for that. Doesn't really know what's over here either. They will find the glaive, and then it'll be Rymark will be open to take the northwest if they want to. And they don't actually know what's inside Hokomoko's base. Hokomoko, on the other hand, they have... Oops. Hokomoko has full knowledge of pretty much everything inside Rymark's base, though we don't see the nanoframe records, but yeah. They're... Well, Hokomoko, I'm pretty sure, managed to find out what was going on. Hokomoko, I don't believe, is aware of this puppy. They might have seen it outside of the vision of this conjurer. Point out... I should point out that neither player actually has radar at this point. This is fairly important because radar is not that handy on this map. Like I said, the ridges can be useful for radar. You can stick radar on the ridges, but they are pretty hard to work with. The radar shadow tends to be very wide. Radar just smacks into the ridges, smacks into them, and just doesn't get anywhere behind that. So you have to spend quite a bit of cash throwing radar around the map entirely. It can be worth it, but it's kind of tricky to pull off. So anyway, from... From this point, I'd say Rymark is probably doing a decent job. They should be pushing forward these pyros as they are. And probably trying to leapfrog. They, I can see they are doing that with this particular metal extractor. However, because they went for jump bust, it's a bit difficult to project force around the map. The puppies obviously can be used to at least disrupt things, but they can't actually destroy anything on their own and take it for themselves. So Rymark's in a bit of a tougher spot. Hokomoko, on the other hand... They're going to have to deal with these defenders, but not many have come up yet. They're still in north side. That's an open area. They can just go straight through there. And the Pyros are in here with no Zeus's or anything to counter them. That will be something that will have to be dealt with as well. It's also a bit of a problem. So it will be something we'll see Rymark probably be able to deal a fair amount of damage here. They're going right in there, harass, checking over here, and actually, that was unlucky. The puppy over to the northwest did not kill the glaive. The glaive got the kill on it first. Now, I'm a little surprised if Rymark doesn't go... Well, okay, actually, I'm totally surprised they don't take the northwest. They did see nothing was built up there. But this should deal a fair amount of damage. The pyros, they checked these expansions and... Whoa, no! Both pyros are going to the northwest. That is surprising. Why not have one pyro go... Okay, one pyro is going to the northwest. That's a bit less surprising, but even then... Enough has been seen that the Northwest shouldn't be considered much of a threat. However, it looks like that is exactly what's going to happen. That Pyro getting out of position. I mean, at this point, these two Pyros, this one here is fine, but this one over here is dead. These Warriors, once they catch up to it, they're going to kill it. The best thing you can do is run away at this point. Maybe get another Metal Extractor, but right now, Hokomoko is at 2140 compared to Rymark's 1325. Rymark is economically behind, has not taken the North at all. This Pyro has now taken the Northwest, and a Freaker should be going over here right now. In fact, it should have been already on the way. Though Rymark did mention, I think in chat, I might not have mentioned that too much, but yeah, Rymark apparently is a bit rusty in this particular match. But yeah, that's the thing to do. A Freaker, actually, how many Freakers, how many workers does Rymark have? Two. Both of which are inside the base. Yeah, Rymark does not have, oh, what am I saying? I have it down here. Rymark does have the Freaker in here, but doesn't actually have a lot of their metal value. Typical rule of thumb that I've been told and actually has been working out for me pretty well, though not the highest level of play, but still, is apparently build about a quarter... 
one quarter of your metal value of your army should be in workers. That seems a little bit high, but when you consider how much you use them to go around the map, expand, build defenses, build other factories, be used as ghetto caretakers, be used to build caretakers, overall it just becomes really handy to have about half a dozen workers lying around to throw wherever you need them at a moment's notice. And unfortunately Rymark does not have that, and Hokomoko on the other hand, we can see how many workers they have once I find one. Hokomoko on the other hand, Conjurer over to the southeast, Conjurer to the south, just avoiding that pyro. Gonna go rebuild, I'm sure it's gonna rebuild this pretty soon, the metal extractor here. Surprisingly not reclaiming this rock. 100 metal going to waste, but that is a thing that could easily be done. And Rymark, focusing on their commander primarily. They haven't, haven't they morphed it? They haven't morphed it once. It is not actually got any modules on it, it's just morphed for the extra build power for support com. Hokomoko on the other hand has not morphed it at all. So overall, not that big of a deal. And this Pyro moving to its death once again. The Warrior should be able to take it. Actually, Warrior is going to take it out. Nope, Pyro gets away. Like I said, best thing they can do in that situation is to get out of there. But more Pyros are coming in. And actually, from here, an approach from around here in could actually be very powerful. From the right angle. It depends on making sure they don't get hit by the Warriors. Or if they do, that they basically want to, like, three on one the Warriors or four on one the Warriors. That will give the Pyros a massive advantage and allow them to win. That's exactly what they need to do. Especially if they use the placeholder here. That would be handy. And a bit surprising how many placeholders are being built. Although it looks like, you know, just one in the queue. One for three Pyros. Could be a little bit high, but then again, placeholders are fairly core. I mean, Rymark is the jumpy player, so I'm not going to disagree too much with what they're doing, because they know jump bots. If there's any player that plays jump bots, it is Rymark. Yeah, at this point, Hokomoko taking the northwest once again. And while Rymark is kind of stopping Hokomoko from coming through here, Hokomoko basically has a massive economic advantage. I mean, right now it's actually gotten bit to, gotten closer to parity thanks to this reclaim. But then again, like I said, Hokomoko actually is also reclaiming themselves. But they are rebuilding the southeast. They could easily take the northwest if they wanted to. And while the center has been taken by Rymark, and I should point out, once again, it's still 1.5 everywhere around the map. We do have hammers, and that's that's actually one of the things I wanted to point out about this game. Hokomoko is going for hammers. I should have pointed this out earlier, but it is an important thing. Also going for size, another important thing in this, actually in many Kaloki matchups. Having a couple sides running around, keeping your opponent on their toes, and keeping it tabs on their base. Keeping tabs on their base is probably the more important thing. But especially just keeping them on their toes, keeping them having to go back. And a warrior does manage to get inside, so Hokomoko getting some harassment in. They're going to kill off this defender, I think... No, there's a puppy around here. That puppy's going to stop it. That puppy's going to put an immediate stop to it, so never mind. That warrior is doing nothing. Yeah, just... I caught it right before it died. But anyway, hammers, like I said, not the most common thing you see. Generally, I've heard that they're best used behind defenses of their own, because, of course, units can come in and just deal with them. And we see Hokomoko trying to use them behind a bunch of warriors, and this is this is what I meant. Yeah. Having them without defenses is a little bit risky, and Hokomoko actually taking a lot of damage from their commander. I think their commander is going to go down. Down it goes, so Hokomoko loses some of the economic advantage they had. But they're still pretty far up. But anyway, still, that is actually a huge loss for Rymark more than it is Hokomoko. Hokomoko and Rymark were basically even. In fact, Rymark is slightly behind given that most of their economy, sorry, not most of it, half, uh, no, what am I saying, not half. I can do fractions. A quarter of their economy is in their commander. A good quarter of their metal economy is in their commander, a third to a quarter actually. While in Hokomoko's case, they're keeping parity without that. And Hokomoko is ahead economically. They've lost their commander and are still even. That says a lot. And Rymark going for a massive defender nest. While the north is completely open, Scythe coming in, Warrior coming in to distract from the Scythe, Hokomoko is playing this very nicely. Now from this point, I mean, it hasn't been spotted yet, I don't think. But from here, the placeholder is not a bad idea. The placeholder will stop the Scythe. The Warrior is a total distraction. I mean, the placeholder here would also have helped. Possibly more puppies though, or moderators. Actually, at this point, moderators would be a very useful thing to have. The scythes are a little bit hard to make that work with, because they will kill the moderators pretty directly. But if enough units are in place, like a few puppies are in place just to distract the scythe, 
that moderator is going to be very powerful. And especially against the warriors, the moderators just chew them up. So if Rymark switches over to moderators, they'll probably have a slightly easier time here. While Rymark is... Sorry, Hokomoko. They are able to see a decent amount of what's going on inside of Rymark's base. They see some of the placeholders. And they are going for the placeholder. That's a really bad idea. Because that is going to be death. And it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. Actually, that... Oh, that Scythe's just barely getting out of the placeholder black hole. Catching one of Rymark's placeholders instead. A little embarrassing, that. However, the puppies are in place, which means that this Scythe is going to be screened out and down it goes. Gets spotted out and killed. Nicely done, Rymark. That was a thing that needed to be done. And surprisingly, building a couple of characters in the center of the map, I think Rymark might be going for a proxy factory. Or I would think that would be a proxy factory, but as we can see, repair is more likely what it's used for. However, two caretakers is a bit overkill. One caretaker is fine, unless there's a lot of reclaim, two doesn't really make sense. I'm not sure what Rymark is trying to do there. Like that's, that is 250, 220 mil that could have gone to another pyro. And with all the units coming in here, that would actually be very handy. And now that Hokomoko has a very secure position, these hammers are raining down death. I mean, the defenders are getting repairs, that does mean that it's rather difficult to actually destroy them. But still, it does keep the caretakers busy, it does use up more of the energy that Primark has, though at this point their energy economy isn't too strained, but if they started to build up metal or get reclaim, that would be a bit of a problem. And actually, it looks like there's enough hammers that the alpha is enough, it's getting rid of the caretakers, sorry, not the caretakers yet, getting rid of the defenders. And in comes that scythe, while well, at the same time, a pyro over to the southeast, getting rid of this expansion, but I think that might be too little too late. Rymark losing their defender nest here to a scythe, and partly distracting the caretakers as well as a result, allowing the hammers to get a bit more damage in, and at this point, Hokomoko moving very strongly in, while Rymark expands to the north, takes out the southeast. Rymark still not ahead, despite the fact that they're reclaiming somewhat, despite the fact that they actually did just destroy an entire expansion pretty handily. That was a clean kill. Now, that pyro did very well, but that wasn't enough. And this is despite the fact that Hokomoko doesn't have a commander. Hokomoko is reclaiming their commander, however, and that is what's keeping them even at this point. And Rymark decided to switch to a sumo, which at this point is probably not the right move. With all these hammers in play, I would think that... Puppies, Pyros would be the best mix. Maybe some warriors, sorry, some moderators deal with the warriors. That's all I could really see as being useful, and Puppies to screen for the sides as well. Sumo is a bit too concentrated. I mean, just look here. So Hokomoko right now has, actually, a fair amount of decentralization. They have five workers right now, one over the northwest, and the other four inside the base doing a bunch of reclaim. Very useful economically, given the amount of forces that have died in Hokomoko's base. Nice move there. Rymark, on the other hand, how many workers do they have? They remain on two workers, one of them going over to the northwest, which is a little bit of bad timing, as there is a warrior coming up here that, that will not intercept from the looks of it. However, it will find the base here. The worker here will find the base over to the northwest, and will probably not enjoy what it sees. Now, with Rymark going for the sumo, I think the sumo is, like I said, it is very concentrated. Okamoko, on the other hand, they are going for more warriors, which does mean they aren't that mobile. But I still have a couple glaives around here, and there aren't a lot of defensive units. There are defenders, that's that's good, and these glaives are on the wrong side. But there are sides going around that aren't going to be countered by the sumo at all. The sumo can't do anything about them. There are two sides running around the map, actually three sides, my mistake, one's inside Hokomoko's base right now. And of course the warriors just spread around the map, they can basically attack anywhere they want. They can operate like raiders to an extent. And then more glaives are being constructed, though it's mostly glaive scythe warrior. And with that army mix, a sumo is just going to get swarmed, and even then it's only going to be about half of Hokomoko's army dealing with it. So Rymark is going for a big gamble. I think they're just going to try to go straight for the main base, try to get rid of the factory directly. Actually, Andrea pointing out in the chat that a gremlin here would be very handy. And yes, it would have been very handy. That's actually a good thing to do in general. Should be pointed out, gremlins and... Gremlins in particular, sides sort of, but gremlins more so because they are not likely to hit much. They aren't going to fire unless this area is around. Anarchid's commander goes... Sorry, not Anarchid. Rymark's commander goes down. But yeah, a gremlin right here would have been a good idea. Scythe also kind of works, but gremlin is better. It's cheaper. It's not going to attack as frequently, and it's... I think is lower health, but like I said, it's cheaper. That's the biggest thing. Throw that out right at the start. 
throw it in their base, scout out for free. They might spot it, and in this case, a gremlin would not be able to get in there. It would get spotted. However, earlier on, it would have been able to do so. But at this point, Rymark just trying to hold the line while the sumo goes forward. And the thing is, these hammers might actually be able to do a fair amount of damage as well. The sumo does move fairly slowly. Given the terrain, the hammers might have a hard time hitting it. But even then, it's going to be tricky. And in comes the, the size as well. Like I said, the sumo cannot deal with this. This is the majority of Rymark's... How much, this is 2,000 metal. Rymark's a 3.4k army value. This is more than half of Rymark's army value right here in the center of the map in one spot. Getting hit by hammers. Slow enough to be hit by the hammers. And while it's able to jump in and deal a bit of damage, getting rid of a warrior just like that, it's not going to do especially well, unfortunately. It's going to keep jumping over and over again, and that will help. It gets rid of a couple hammers. But at this point, it's already at two-thirds of its health. Rockos are coming in. The hammers are still hitting it. The hammers are spreading around, so the sumo can't really get rid of them efficiently. And at the same time, there's a scythe over to the north. And Hokomoko hasn't taken the southeast at all. Hokomoko hasn't really been... Sorry, Rymark. Rymark hasn't taken the southeast, Hokomoko hasn't retaken it either, but Rymark has not really taken any of the corner expansions. I think that's been the fatal flaw so far in Rymark's game. They just haven't had the economy because they haven't taken these corner expansions. They haven't taken the reclaim either. I mean, they've taken some of it, especially now that there's a bunch in the center. But really, this is a desperation play by Rymark with the sumo. And they're making more sumos. I mean, the two sumos and then going back to Puppy Pyro, I'm not sure what the motivation is here. I, I could see one maybe as a bit of an intimidation tactic, and then throw puppies and pyros around where your units, your opponent's units are going to be focused on the sumo. So while it is a lot of money, if it dies in your territory, it's not so bad, and it's going to lure your opponent's forces into one spot. Probably. I mean, Hokomoko is being lured into one spot. For the, for the most part, these warriors are actually avoiding it completely. But if you throw in a bunch of lightweight units to get around the map afterwards, then your opponent's mostly focused on your army, and so at least... Their army value is focused where your army value is focused, though admittedly there's there's still less cost worth of units being used to counter the sumo than there is in the sumo. Yeah, 860 cost worth of units that are fighting and countering the sumo right now, compared to the 2,000 cost of the sumo. Not the most efficient choice. But yeah, had there been more lightweight units built earlier, and built in general just after with the sumo, to go around the map, harass out, destroy what Hokomoko has, possibly even go around to the base, because there's only this. This... That's it. There's one Lotus. And the Stinger, but the Stinger's not that important. If they go around the back, that's not going to make a difference. And down goes the Sumo, finally getting taken out inside of Rymark's territory, sort of. But at this point, there isn't really any use dealing with territory right now. Hokomoko has taken the majority of the map. Rymark's base isn't even safe. There isn't anything in the way of defenses except for that placeholder, and that, even then... I mean, the second Sumo is coming in, but I don't think Rymark is going to have much of a chance from here, unfortunately. So, th the big takeaway is these corner expansions are really important, which Hokomoko realized, and Rymark did not capitalize on. They took the they took the Northwest. They could have easily taken it. They took the Southeast as well. They could have easily expanded there. But they didn't do that. And I think just general lack of freegers. This really important thing. Having spare workers is far better than being in need of them. Far, far better. And Rymark now actually pushing a lot of metal, well, don't even have the metal to push. I only have 12 metal, and for some reason pushing a lot of it into the factory. No, these Freakers, they should be reclaiming. A lot of them should be reclaiming. And they are not reclaiming, and that's actually another thing that Rymark would need to do, but at this point, it's a bit of a lost cause. I mean, as you can see, Hokomoko has the majority of the map. They have 30, plus 30 compared to Rymark's plus 15 or so at best, plus 10 raw. Plus 15 at the reclaim. I mean, if all those workers were reclaiming, you'd actually... I think Rymark would get up to about plus 30 as well. Be basically even. However, that is not happening. And while the Sumo is going to be able to do a decent amount of damage here, it's still not great. This one Sumo, and it could get around the side and avoid most of the stuff, but it's not going to get into Hokomoko's base. That's kind of the only hope Rymark has, is smashing up Hokomoko's Glokibot factory. And even then, a sharpshooter is coming up to deal with this. So at this point... I mean, it might be worth pausing to an analyze from here. What could Rymark do? This is a this is a tight thing. We can actually go from Rymark's point of view. What could Rymark do? What does Rymark know? So Rymark doesn't have radar, doesn't really know where Hokomoko's forces are. I mean, we know the Hokomoko's forces are mainly concentrated in the center, trying to get the sumo. 
And these puppies could go around the side, actually could very easily go around the side and scout out a bit, see what's going on. The sumo is going to be countered directly. Wherever that goes, Rymark is going to be countered. Like, Hokomoka's forces are going to follow it. So like I said, at this point, Puppy Pyro, the Freegers, a little bit too late for that, but if they reclaim, that will work. So, you know, six or so Freakers, or say, no, four Freakers, four Freakers reclaiming is going to be enough. But yeah, four Freakers just reclaiming this entire area. That would at least give Rymark economic parity for a minute or two. With that, Puppy Pyro Moderator would probably be able to get rid of pretty much everything here. Moderators for the Warriors, the Pyros for the Rockers and Hammers, and the puppies just for a general screen for scythes and scouting around, possibly getting rid of some stray mexes. I mean, these mexes are naked. And this one here is not quite naked, but could be hit for free. And the ones over in the northwest as well. There's a lot of naked expand here. Rymark not aware of any of it due to lack of radar. But there are, are a lot of naked mexes on the map. But unfortunately, Rymark does not have that information. So what Rymark will likely do is move into the sumo just a straight shot with the sumo, trying to do as best they can to get into Hokumoka's base and smash up the Klogi Bot Factory. And, oops, why is... Okay, there we go. So that's the best they're going to try to do, and surprisingly, Rymark is still retreating. They haven't got any repair bays around... No, there's no repair bays around here. No caretakers set up. Nothing to repair. The placeholder not even joining up with the sumo to help out. Yeah, Rymark, really just a matter of economy. And at this point, lack of reclaim, and Ryan Mark throws in the towel, doesn't even bother to try to go for the reclaim to get in the win. Just drops the game, and that was hopefully a fairly educational game, showing, at least on bad lines, the power of these corner expansions. Also true of maps like Intersection. They have similar corner expansions, though they have a much weaker center game. But that was important. I mean, Ryan Mark, like I said, did not go for the corner expansions, and I think that really cost them the game. It would have been a far easier game for them had they taken at least one of the corner expansions when it was open. Because they at, had opened up both of them at various times in the game. Not to mention just having their Freakers to expand in general. So that was that. I hope you enjoyed that. I don't... Yeah, it wasn't, I suppose, the best game to analyze. If you guys have any games you want to see analyzed that you think are really good play or that you think are, is play that could use some constructive criticism, please let me know comment or message on YouTube or a message in 0k lobby however you can find to contact me so let me know if you find any games that are good for analysis I do generally look at the replay list try to find a few this is pretty good but if you guys want something that you think is better if you didn't think this is very good wanted something different please let me know so I can find it but yeah, I think this game really did showcase the power of reclaim Hokomoko did so much with reclaim I mean it's doing so much with reclaim even now at the end of the game while Rymark barely reclaimed it all. Their base still has quite a lot of metal. If you look at how much metal they had in their base, there was... Other than the base destruction itself, easily a thousand metal. I mean, once the sumo was there, that sumo alone is about four... Okay, six... That's 800 metal. But even discounting the sumo, that's still a good 1,200 metal there that they could have taken throughout most of the game. And in the center of the map, they were taking the commander, which is good. That's always important. When the commander is dead, reclaim it. Very important. But still not enough reclaim, and that was a big deal, especially to get back in the game. That's that's the comeback mechanism of 0k, is reclaim. It is a very important comeback mechanism. It's also an important advantage in securing mechanism. However, it works both ways. If you have reclaim, you can use it to get back in the game. And Rymark, unfortunately, did not, but like I said, they are rusty. So let's just point that out when playing. Reclaim is life. Reclaim is huge. But anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. Once again, I hope you enjoyed that. And have a good night, everyone.